Act Five of the Tragedy of Romeo and Juliet by William Shakespeare. Act Five, Scene One, Mantua, a street. Enter Romeo. Romeo. If I may trust the flattering truth of sleep, my dreams presage some joyful news at hand. My bosom's lord sits lightly in his throne, and all this day an unaccustomed spirit lifts me above the ground with cheerful thoughts. I dreamt my lady came and found me dead, strange dream that gives a dead man leave to think, and breathed such life with kisses in my lips that I revived and was an emperor. Ah me, how sweet is love itself possessed, but when love's shadows are so rich in joy. And to Romeo's man, Balthazar, booted. News from Verona. How now, Balthazar, dost thou not bring me letters from the friar? How doth my lady? Is my father well? How fares my Juliet? That I ask again, for nothing can be ill if she be well. Man. Then she is well, and nothing can be ill. Her body sleeps in Capel's monument, and her immortal part with angels lives. I saw her laid low in her kindred's vault, and presently took post to tell it you. Oh, pardon me for bringing these ill news, since you did leave it for my office, sir. Romeo. Is it e'en so? Then I defy you, stars. Thou knowest my lodging. Get me ink and paper, and hire post-horses. I will hence to-night. Man, I do beseech you, sir, have patience. Your looks are pale and wild, and do import some misadventure. Romeo, tush, thou art deceived. Leave me, and do the thing I bid thee do. Hast thou no letters to me from the friar? Man, no, my good lord. Romeo, no matter. Get thee gone, and hire those horses. I'll be with thee straight. Exit, Balthazar. Well, Juliet, I will lie with thee tonight. Let's see for means. O oh, mischief, thou art swift to enter in the thoughts of desperate men. I do remember an apothecary, and hereabouts a dwells, which late I noted in tattered weeds, with overwhelming brows. Culling of simples, meager were his looks, Sharp misery had worn him to the bones, And in his needy shop a tortoise hung, An alligator stuffed, and other skins of ill-shaped fishes, And about his shelves a beggarly account of empty boxes, Green earthen pots, bladders, and musty seeds, Remnants of pack-thread, and old cakes of roses, Were thinly scattered, to make up a show, Noting this penury, to myself I said, and if a man did need a poison now, whose sale is present death in Mantua, here lives a caitiff, wretch, would sell it him. Oh, this same thought did but forerun my need, and this same needy man must sell it me, as I remember, this should be the house, being holiday. The beggar shop is shut. What? Ho, oh, apothecary. Enter apothecary. Apothecary, who calls so loud? Romeo, come hither, man, I see that thou art poor. Hold, there is forty ducats. Let me have a dram of poison, such soon speeding gear as will disperse itself through all the veins, that the life-weary taker maul fall dead, and that the trunk may be discharged of breath, as violently as hasty powder fired, doth hurry from the fatal cannon's womb. Apothecary, such mortal drugs I have, but Mantua's law is death to any he that utters them. Romeo, art thou so barren full of wretchedness and fears to die? Famine is in thy cheeks, need and oppression starveth in thine eyes, contempt and beggary hangs upon thy back, the world is not thy friend, nor the world's law, the world affords no law to make thee rich, then be not poor, but break it and take this apothecary my poverty but not my will consents romeo i pay thy poverty and not thy will apothecary put this in any liquid thing you will and drink it off 
and if you had the strength of twenty men, it would dispatch you straight. Romeo, there is thy gold, worse poison to men's souls, doing more murther in this loathsome world than these poor compounds that thou mayest not sell. I sell thee poison, thou hast sold me none. Farewell, buy food and get thyself in flesh. Come, cordial and not poison, go with me to Juliet's grave, for there must I use thee. Exunt. Scene two, Verona, Friar Lawrence's cell. Enter Friar John to Friar Lawrence. John, holy Franciscan friar, brother, ho! Enter Friar Lawrence. Lawrence, this same should be the voice of Friar John. Welcome from Mantua, what says Romeo? Or, if his mind be writ, give me his letter. John, going to find a barefoot brother out, one of our order, to associate me here in the city, visiting the sick, and finding him the searchers of the town, suspecting that we both were in a house where the infectious pestilence did reign, sealed up the doors, and would not let us forth, so that my speed to Mantua there was stayed. Lawrence, who bear my letter then to Romeo? John, I could not send it. Here it is again, nor get a messenger to bring it thee. So fearful were they of infection. Lawrence, unhappy fortune, by my brotherhood, the letter was not nice, but full of charge, of dear import, and the neglecting it may do much danger. Friar John, go hence, get me an iron crow, and bring it straight unto my cell. John, brother, I'll go and bring it thee. Exit. Lawrence, now must I to the monument alone, Within this three hours will fair Juliet wake. She will beshrew me much that Romeo hath not no notice of these accidents. But I will write again to Mantua, and keep her at my cell till Romeo come. Poor living corse, closed in a dead man's tomb. Exit. Scene 3. Verona. A churchyard. In it the monument of the Capulets. Enter Paris and his page with flowers and a torch. Paris. Give me thy torch, boy. Hence, and stand aloof. Yet put it out, for I would not be seen. Under yon yew tree lay thee all along, Holding thine ear close to the hollow ground. So shall no foot upon the churchyard tread, Being loose, unfirm, with digging up of graves. But thou shalt hear it. Whistle then to me as signal that thou hearst something approach. Give me those flowers. Do as I bid thee. Go. Page. Aside. I am almost afraid to stand alone here in the churchyard. Yet I will adventure. Retires. Paris. Sweet flower, with flowers thy bridal bed I strew. Oh, woe! Thy canopy is dust and stones, which with sweet water nightly I will do. Or wanting that, with tears distilled by moans, the obsequies that I for thee will keep, nightly shall be to strew thy grave and weep. Whistleboy. The boy gives warning, something doth approach. What cursed foot wanders this way tonight to cross my obsequies in true love's right? What, with a torch? Muffle me, night, a while. Retires. Enter Romeo and Balthazar with a torch, a mattock, and a crow of iron. Romeo, give me that mattock and the wrenching iron. Hold, take this letter. Early in the morning see thou deliver it to my lord and father. Give me the light. Upon thy life I charge thee, whate'er thou hearest or seest, stand all aloof, and do not interrupt me in my course. Why I descend into this bed of death is partly to behold my lady's face, but chiefly to take thence from her dead finger a precious ring, a ring that I must use in dear employment. Therefore hence be gone, but if thou, jealous, dost return to pry in what I farther shall intend to do, by heaven I will tear thee joint by joint and strew this hungry churchyard with thy limbs. The time and my intents are savage wild, more fierce and more inexorable far than empty tigers or the roaring sea. Balthazar, I will be gone, sir, 
and not trouble you. Romeo, so shalt thou show me friendship. Take thou that. Live and be prosperous, and farewell, good fellow. Balthazar, aside. For all this same, I'll hide me hereabout. His looks I fear, and his intents I doubt. Retires. Romeo, thou detestable maw, thou womb of death, Gorged with the dearest morsel of the earth. Thus I enforce thy rotten jaws to open, And in despite I'll cram thee with more food. Romeo opens the tomb. Paris. This is that banished haughty Montague That murdered my love's cousin, With which grief it is supposed the fair creature died, And here is come to do some villainous shame to the dead bodies. I will apprehend him. Stop thy unhallowed toil, vile Montague. Can vengeance be pursued further than death? Condemned villain, I do apprehend thee. Obey and go with me, for thou must die. Romeo, I must indeed, and therefore came I hither. Good gentle youth, tempt not a desperate man. Fly hence, and leave me. Think upon these gone. Let them affright thee. I beseech thee, youth but not another sin upon my head by urging me to fury. Oh, be gone! By heaven, I love thee better than myself, for I come hither armed against myself. Stay not, be gone, live, and hereafter say, a madman's mercy bid thee run away. Paris, I do defy thy conjuration and apprehend thee for a felon here. Romeo, wilt thou provoke me? Then, have at thee, boy. They fight. Page. O oh Lord, they fight. I will go call the watch. Exit. Paris falls. Paris. Oh, I am slain. If thou be merciful, open the tomb. Lay me with Juliet. Dies. Romeo. In faith, I will. Let me peruse this face. Mercutio's kinsman noble county Paris. What said my man when my betossed soul did not attend him as we rode? I think he told me Paris should have married Juliet. Said he not so? Or did I dream it so? Or am I mad, hearing him talk of Juliet, to think it was so? Oh, give me thy hand, one writ with me in sour misfortune's book. I'll bury thee in a triumphant grave. A grave? Oh no, a landthorn, slaughtered youth, for here lies Juliet, and her beauty makes this vault a feasting presence full of light. Death, lie thou there, by a dead man interred. Lays him in the tomb. How oft, when men are at the point of death, have they been merry? which their keepers call a lightning before death. Oh, how may I call this a lightning? Oh, my love, my wife, death, that hath sucked the honey of thy breath, hath had no power yet upon thy beauty. Thou art not conquered. Beauty's ensign yet is crimson in thy lips and in thy cheeks, and death's pale flag is not advanced there. Tybalt, Liest thou there in thy bloody sheet? Oh, what more favor can I do to thee Than with that hand that cut thy youth in twain To sunder his that was thine enemy? Forgive me, cousin. Ah, dear Juliet, why art thou yet so fair? Shall I believe that unsubstantial death is amorous, And that the lean abhorred monster Keeps thee here in dark to be his paramour. For fear of that, I still will stay with thee, And never from this palace of dim night Depart again. Here, here will I remain, With worms that are thy chambermaids. Oh, here will I set up my everlasting rest, And shake the yoke of inauspicious stars From this world-wearied flesh. Eyes, look your last, arms, take your last embrace, and lips, O oh, you the doors of breath, seal with a righteous kiss, a dateless bargain to engrossing death. Come, bitter conduct, 
come unsavory guide. Thou desperate pilot, now at once run on the dashing rocks thy seasick weary bark. Here's to my love, drinks. Oh, true apothecary, thy drugs are quick. Thus with a kiss I die. Falls. Enter Friar Lawrence with lanthorn, crow, and spade. Friar. St. Francis be my speed! How oft to-night have my old feet stumbled at graves! Who's there? Balthazar. Here's one, a friend, and one that knows you well. Friar. Bliss be upon you. Tell me, good, my friend, what torch is yon that vainly lends his light to grubs and eyeless skulls? As I discern, it burneth in the Capel's monument. Balthazar, it doth so, holy sir, and there's my master, one that you love. Friar, who is it? Balthazar, Romeo. Friar, how long hath he been there? Balthazar, full half an hour. Friar, go with me to the vault. Balthazar, I dare not, sir. My master knows not, but I am gone hence and fearfully did menace me with death if I did stay to look on his intents. Friar, stay then, I'll go alone, fear comes upon me. Oh, much I fear some ill unthrifty thing. Balthazar, as I did sleep under this yew tree here, I dreamt my master and another fought, and that my master slew him. Friar, Romeo, alack, alack, what blood is this? which stains the stony entrance of this sepulchre. What mean these masterless and gory swords to lie discolored by this place of peace? Enters the tomb. Romeo? Oh, pale! Who else? What? Paris, too? And steeped in blood? Ah, what an unkind hour is guilty of this lamentable chance! The lady stirs. Juliet rises. Juliet. Oh, comfortable friar, where's my lord? I do remember well where I should be, and there I am. Where is my Romeo? Friar. I hear some noise. Lady, come from that nest of death, contagion and unnatural sleep. A greater power than we can contradict hath thwarted our intents. Come, come away. Thy husband in thy bosom there lies dead and Paris, too. Come, I'll dispose of thee among a sisterhood of holy nuns. Stay not to question, for the watch is coming. Come, go, good Juliet, I dare no longer stay. Juliet, go, get thee hence, for I will not away. Exit Friar. What's here? A cup? Closed in my true love's hand? Poison, I see hath been his timeless end. O oh, churl, drunk all, and left no friendly drop to help me after? I will kiss thy lips, haply some poison yet doth hang on them, to make me die with a restorative. Kisses him. Thy lips are warm. Chief watch, within. Lead, boy, which way? Yea, noise? Then I'll be brief. Oh, happy dagger! Snatches Romeo's dagger. This is thy sheath. There rest, and let me die. She stabs herself and falls on Romeo's body. Enter Paris's boy and watch. Boy. This is the place, there, where the torch doth burn. Chief watch. The ground is bloody. Search about the churchyard. Go, some of you. Where you find attach, exempt some of the watch. Pitiful sight! Here lies the county slain, and Juliet bleeding, warm and newly dead. Who here hath lain this two days buried? Go, tell the prince, run to the Capulets, raise up the Montagues, some other search, exempt others of the watch. We see the ground whereon these woes do lie. But the true ground of all these piteous woes we cannot without circumstance descry. Enter some of the watch with Romeo's man Balthazar. Second watch. 
Here's Romeo's man. We found him in the churchyard. Chief Watch. Hold him in safety till the prince come hither. Enter Friar Lawrence and another watchman. Third Watch. Here is a friar that trembles, sighs, and weeps. We took this mattock and this spade from him, and he was coming from this churchyard side. Chief Watch. A great suspicion. Stay the friar, too. Enter the prince and attendants. Prince. What misadventure is so early up that calls our person from our morning rest? Enter Capulet and his wife with others. Capulet. What should it be that they so shriek abroad? Wife. The people in the street cry, Romeo, some Juliet, and some Paris, and all run with open outcry toward our monument. Prince. What fear is this which startles in our ears? Chief Watch. Sovereign, here lies the county Paris slain, and Romeo dead, and Juliet, dead before, warm and newly killed. Prince, search, seek, and know how this foul murder comes. Chief Watch, here is a friar and slaughtered Romeo's man, with instruments upon them fit to open these dead men's tombs. Capulet, oh heavens, O oh, wife, look how our daughter bleeds. This dagger hath mistaken for, lo, his house is empty on the back of Montague, and it missheathed in my daughter's bosom. Wife, O oh me, this sight of death is as a bell that warns my old age to a sepulchre. Enter Montague and others. Prince, come, Montague, for thou art early up to see thy son and heir more early down. Montague, alas, my liege, my wife is dead to-night. Grief of my son's exile hath stopped her breath. What further woe conspires against mine age? Prince, look, and thou shalt see. Montague, O oh, thou untaught! What manners is in this to press before thy father to a grave? Prince, seal up the mouth of outrage for a while, till we can clear these ambiguities, and know their spring their head, their true descent, and then will I be general of your woes, and lead you even to death. Meantime forbear, and let mischance be slave to patience. Bring forth the parties of suspicion. Friar, I am the greatest, able to do least, yet most suspected, as the time and place doth make against me of this direful murther. And here I stand, both to impeach and purge myself condemned, and myself excused. Prince, then say at once what thou dost know in this. Friar, I will be brief, for my short date of breath is not so long as is a tedious tale. Romeo, there dead, was husband to that Juliet, and she, there dead, that Romeo's faithful wife, I married them, and their stolen marriage day was Tybalt's doomsday, whose untimely death banished the new-made bridegroom from this city, for whom, and not for Tybalt, Juliet pined. You, to remove that siege of grief from her, betrothed, and would have married her perforce to County Paris. Then comes she to me, and with wild looks bid me devise some mean to rid her from this second marriage or in my cell there would she kill herself. Then gave I her, so tutored by my art, a sleeping potion, which so took effect as I intended, for it wrought on her the form of death. Meantime I writ to Romeo, that he should hither come as this dire knight to help to take her from her borrowed grave, being the time the potion's force should cease. But he which bore my letter, Friar John, was stayed by accident, and yesternight returned my letter back. Then all alone at the prefixed hour of her waking came I to take her from her kindred's vault, meaning to keep her closely at my cell, till I conveniently could send to Romeo. But when I came, some minute ere the time of her awaking, here untimely lay the noble Paris and true Romeo dead. She wakes, and I entreated her come forth and bear this work of heaven with patience. And then a noise did scare me from the tomb, and she, too desperate, would not go with me. But, as it seems, did violence on herself. 
all this I know, and to the marriage her nurse is privy. And if aught in this miscarried by my fault, let my old life be sacrificed some hour before his time, unto the rigor of severest law. Prince, we still have known thee for a holy man. Where's Romeo's man? What can he say in this? Balthazar, I brought my master news of Juliet's death, and then in post he came from Mantua to this same place, to this same monument, this letter he early bid me give his father, and threatened me with death, going in the vault, if I departed not and left him there. Prince, give me the letter, I will look on it. Where is the county's page that raised the watch? Sirrah, what made your master in this place? Boy, he came with flowers to strew his lady's grave, and bid me stand aloof, and so I did. Anon comes one with light to ope the tomb, and by and by my master drew on him. And then I ran away to call the watch. Prince, this letter doth make good the friar's words, their course of love, the tidings of her death. And here he writes that he did buy a poison of a poor apothecary, and therewithal came to this vault to die, and lie with Juliet. Where be these enemies? Capulet, Montague, see what a scourge is laid upon your hate that heaven finds means to kill your joys with love. And I, for winking at you, discords too, have lost a brace of kinsmen. All are punished. Capulet, O oh, brother Montague, give me thy hand. This is my daughter's jointure, for no more can I demand. Montague, but I can give thee more, for I will raise her statue in pure gold that whiles Verona by that name is known, there shall no figure at such rate be set as that of true and faithful Juliet. Capulet, as rich shall Romeo's by his ladies lie, poor sacrifices of our enmity. Prince, a glooming peace this morning with it brings. The sun for sorrow will not show his head. Go hence to have more talk of these sad things. Some shall be pardoned, and some punished. For never was a story of more woe than this of Juliet and her Romeo. Exit, Omnis. The End. End of Act 5. And also the end of the tragedy of Romeo and Juliet by William Shakespeare.